Welcome to the Little Rock Basketball Radio Show, presented by Stevens. Welcome to the Little Rock Coaches Show out at the Embassy Suites in West, in West Little Rock. Ray Tucker not with us tonight, and uh, neither is Coach Joe Foley. Coach Steve Weedor sitting in for Coach Joe Foley. Coach Foley had a uh, prior engagement he had to attend to, so good to have Coach Weeds with us. And, uh, Coach, it was a rough week last week for the Little Rock Trojans. Yeah, two tough games. I mean, two hard-fought games for our ladies and – uh, you know, just got off to a bad start in both of them, and then we fought our way back and uh, had a chance to win, you know, uh, especially the game that went in triple overtime. And then, you know, on Saturday we uh, played a really good Texas Arlington team and got it back to one. And, you know, when you fight your way back like that, sometimes you just I, – I just felt like we ran out a little bit of juice, you know, at the end and couldn't finish it off. Well, and these, these ladies are still not in basketball shape after being off for so long because of the flu bug that went through the team after the Arkansas game and then the COVID issues with some other teams and then our own team right after Christmas and the fact that uh, they missed 32 days without playing a basketball game. And some missed more than that. Tia Harvey didn't play since the Texas A&M game on December 1st until she played against Troy. So they're still trying to get back in basketball shape, and you can't really do a whole lot in the middle of the week because you've got a game on Thursday, a game on Saturday. You have to give them a day off uh, once a week, so that usually comes on Sunday. Yeah, that, that's been something we've really been battling. We've, you know, tried to do a few things to try to help them, you know, get some extra work in here and there. But, you know, when you're playing two games a week and you're in that situation, it's it's sort of, you, you know, you got to play your way into shape. And, uh, you know, I, th- I think some of them's getting a little bit better, but – you know, we still got a ways to go, and, and we've got a little time to get there. I mean, we got a month before the conference tournament, and, you know, these ladies are trying to work hard and, and get their self back into basketball shape, and, and I think they'll get there. The game against Texas State, Little Rock loses 69-65 in three overtimes. It's the longest game in Little Rock women's basketball history, and Little Rock had several chances to win. I had a chance to win it in regulation, had a chance to win it in the first overtime, and even had a chance the second overtime. It come down to free throws and execution, I think, more than anything else, and maybe a lack of concentration as well in, in that game. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, we had our chances, and uh, uh, just, you know, when when you are battling through conditioning and things like that, you're going to make some mistakes at, at times. And I felt like, you know, some of our young ladies, you know, their legs were gone during that overtime, and it was tough for them to step up there to the free throw line and, make the shot when they needed to or, you know, and turnovers and different things like that happen when you're in that condition. When you look at that game, Denasia Hood was a player that uh, we knew about. We had her circled, and she come in, had 21 in the first half, and it was kind of like, oh, my goodness. Uh, I mean, she looked like an NBA player in that game, and maybe we helped her look a little better. But as a shooter, you were a shooter in college. When your first shot goes down, it kind of – get you on a roll and you start to feel they have that confidence and once you see that first one go through that second one go through sometimes that basket just opens up a little bit doesn't it yeah it gets a lot easier you know and that that's our fault I mean we definitely knew you know that she was one of the best players in the conference and we had a game plan going in and we just didn't execute like we needed to and like you said when you let them make those first two or three shots I mean it makes it tough and uh, uh, she got it going and she carried them and then you know, but I, I, I do feel like we came back the second half and really did a good job on her and executed the way we needed to. And, you know, maybe that will carry over to, you know, when the next time we play them. And uh, we we just keep telling our young ladies that, you know, you, you got to learn through experience and things that they've went through. And when when it gets conference tournament time, you got to be ready to go. And uh, I, I, I think they will be. Well, we have some time before then to get to the conference tournament, obviously. The next game up for the Little Rock Trojans is uh, on the road at Louisiana Lafayette on Thursday and then ULM on Saturday. But the loss to Texas State, that one stung, obviously. And then you come back two days later and you play a good UT Arlington team and you get down early in that one as well. And you got down 20 points. You got down 19 against Texas State, able to come all the way back, tie it up, send it into overtime, even take the lead at some points in that game. The game against UT Arlington, we never let. We, We were able to keep it get it close within three points, I believe, and then UT Arlington kind of stretched it out. But one thing that I didn't like, and I'm going to bring this up, uh, you can comment, you cannot comment. 
uh, Jacobs for UTA had 24 points. She was 7 of 13. Uh, she was that 6'1", 6'2", post player that they had. Very athletic. Very athletic. She played 37 minutes. She was 10 of 12 at the free throw line, had five rebounds. She didn't get called for one single personal foul in that game. Tell me how as physical a game as that was, she plays 37 minutes, but yet she doesn't pick up one foul in that game? She's she's pretty good defensive player, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's coach's talk. Come on, Weed, you got to give me a little more than that. But uh, Rosie well, Potter, they, yeah, go ahead. I mean, they they outscored us from the free throw line. There's no doubt about well, it. They shot 28 times and made 22. We only got there 10 times, and we got there twice in the fourth quarter. That was a physical fourth quarter. I get the first and second. We weren't in the game. It was a 20-point game. But when it got time, crunch time, I mean, it was a physical game. They went to the line 15 times in the fourth quarter. And I know sometimes we put them there because we were trying to foul. But a lot of the times they were driving, we were driving. They got the call. We didn't. Two free throws in the fourth quarter. Yeah, We hit both of them. Yeah, that makes it tough. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, give them credit. We started out the game with five turnovers. Yeah. I mean, when, when you put yourself in a hole like that, like I said a while ago, it makes it – you know, you fight your way back, and we got all the way to, you know, I think we was down one at one time during the fourth quarter, and we, and we were in the game, but, you know, you, you put a lot of energy to do that, and uh, we just couldn't finish the game off. And, it, you know, it, it's just concentration, and, and uh, yeah, we, we had one day to prepare, and this goes back to, you know, having some inexperienced players out there that haven't, you know, been around – uh, this league and doing things and when you prepare and then you not come out there and execute some of the things that we were trying to do against them and and turn the ball over you're going to put yourself in a hole and that I, I think our girls learn from that Rosie Potter had 23 points in that game she was not there it looked like in the game against Texas State I think if she shows up and I mean she had 24 against Troy uh, she had a good game against uh, South Alabama, a double-digit performance there. And then she kind of went away against Texas State, and then she shows up against UT Arlington with 23. If we can get her to get exactly. some points going in that Texas State game, we probably win that one. And then this one, she was one away from tying her career high. Sally Corum of 15 points, nine rebounds, one uh, rebound away from a double-double. And Angelique Francis came back, I believe, in the te- UT Arlington game after uh, the, the performance State. in the Texas State game. She had nine points seven rebounds, and that one three or four at the free throw line for, for Leak. Yeah, and and you mentioned Rozzy. I mean, she she's a very talented player, and, and she does a lot for us, and we just got to get her more consistent. Like you said, she, she didn't play that well against Texas State and then the week before against App State, and then she's had some really, really good games, you know, after Christmas for us, and, and we got to keep her consistent and uh, – you know, to do that, you know, she's just got to keep improving and learning how we're doing things and, uh, you know, relaxing. Rosie is a very athletic player that can get, you know, get to the uh, free throw line by driving the basketball. And she can also shoot the three, you know, when we need her to. And uh, uh, she's, you know, it's her first year. And, and I think she'll continue to improve on that. And uh, hopefully when we get, you know, tournament time, she'll be, there and be consistent for us we will wrap up more about the ut arlington game and then we'll look forward to the games this week ull and ulm the louisiana schools coming up here on the little rock coaches show at the nbc suites we're live stay with us back after this on 106.7 buzz 2 it's time to expect more from yourself from us from the typical college experience UA Little Rock offers world-class programs, including business, computer science, criminal justice, cybersecurity, engineering, and nursing. But there's so much more. Expect to be amazed by state-of-the-art facilities. Expect to be challenged by motivated faculty. And expect a welcome place in the heart of Arkansas. University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Sport builds us up. It strengthens our bodies. It strengthens our resolve. Sport teaches us lessons of grace or humility or humanity and that we're far more powerful together. Winning the hour or winning the year, we're winning our lives. We're winning our way. Because while a season is short, fierce is forever.
Welcome back to West Little Rock. The Embassy Suites Little Rock is in the business district, and minutes from the campus of UA Little Rock, Embassy Suites is the official hotel of your Little Rock Trojans. Embassy Suites Little Rock, a great place to stay. Coach, I must say, uh, the chef here, one of the chefs here, <laughs> Charlie Michelson, I worked with him a long time ago, and he brought out some flatbread pepperoni pizza. And he asked us last week after the show, he said, what, what would you like? Would you like some pizza before the show? I said, yeah, Charlie, I'd, I'd like it at about 6.15. <laughs> he decided to bring it at 6.58 today. So I said, I can't eat it during the show, but I can take bites during the commercial breaks. And so it's very good. So if you if you uh, like pizza, um, you love Italian, Thank come you, get Trey. you some flatbread pizza. That. Well, I was going to give you some. You said you didn't want any. Well, I, I And it'll be cold by the time Coach Walker gets here. <laughs> Well, I, I think you can handle that pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think I can too. Uh, before we wrap up the uh, the UTA game, you mentioned the fact that uh, five turnovers in our first couple, five trips down the floor, basically, and UTA is going down the other end, and they're scoring. I mean, we shoot 17% in that first quarter. We get outscored 20-6, to six, and then we start fighting our way back in. We outscore them 15-14 the second quarter, 20-12 to 12 in the third quarter, and then the fourth quarter, and – if we could have kept that momentum from the third quarter going into the fourth quarter, I think it would have been a different ball game. Right, and, and you know, the turnovers started. Uh, UTA plays a switching uh, man-to-man defense, and we hadn't seen that a whole lot, and we really worked on it, you know, quite a bit during the one day to get ready, and we put in a few things, and, you know, it, it was new. And, and I just felt like they were maybe thinking more than playing, and it, it – you know, it, it put us in a situation where we turned it over. And, and then, you know, Coach Foley, he he's, does a great job just adjusting. He switched some things around, made it a little bit easier for us to get in our offense and do some things. And, and when we did that, we were able to adjust and, and started, you know, getting the ball where we needed to. And uh, that made a big difference. And then, you know, going into the fourth quarter, you know, trying to continue what we were doing, it was just, uh, you know, the fact that, hey, you know, we we played, what did we play, six, seven girls? I mean, they, they, were, they were running out of juice a little bit, I think, after the way they fought back and did some of the things that we had to do to get back in the game. And and when you put yourself in a hole like that, that's what you're going to, you know, that, that's what you're going to get to. And, and you got to be able to, to play these games at home and come out and, and be ready to, to jump on the teams that we're, you know, playing in this conference season and, 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 and not put yourself in a hole like we did against Texas Arlington. Yeah, we basically played six. Uh, Azaria Robinson played four minutes. Michaela Eddins played two. And Dario Johnson played 39. She fouled out of that game. So if she doesn't foul out, she probably plays the full 40. And who knows, that game might have gone overtime too if she doesn't foul out. Uh, but you look at UT Arlington, they were able to, to play more players off of their bench. They went, uh, let's see, nine deep in Halverson had the least amount of minutes at nine. So they had one player with 19 off the bench, one with 14, one with 21. So they were able to use more players and and were able to get into our legs, like you said. And they had just played a game at Arkansas State where they went up and down. I mean, that was a 90-point game up there in Jonesboro. And then for them to come down, and I was surprised at how conditioned they were. But I did notice that they started getting tired, too, in that third quarter. And then I don't know what Coach Wright told them going into that fourth, but – it's like they flipped a switch Played in that good. fourth quarter. Right, right. They did. And, and give them credit. I mean, I, I feel like they're one of the better teams in the conference. I mean, they're big. They can score. Uh, they, they can hurt you in a lot of different positions on the floor. They've got a good inside game. Uh, their point guard is probably one of the most talented in the league as far as uh, being able to create mismatches. She's, you know, one of the bigger point guards in the league. And so that gives a lot of teams trouble. And, you know, they've got a good team, but, you know, I, I think our girls and our coaches will tell you, you know, we, we look forward to maybe getting to see them again. And, uh, uh, you know, we got to go to their place, of course. But, you know, we've uh, done pretty good down there in, in Arlington. We will get to see them again. It's going to be on February the 24th when we travel to Texas Arlington. That game will tip at 7 o'clock. And then uh, we will go to uh, Texas State San Marcos on the 26th. And then, kind of weird with us finishing on the road then we leave from austin and fly to pensacola for the conference tournament so not even coming back to little rock it could be a long time 
before we see the state of Arkansas once we leave on that Wednesday to head down to UT Arlington. We hope it's a long time because right. that means we're still playing a lot of basketball in Pensacola, Pensacola by the beach. Yeah, I mean, it. February is going to be a, you know, it's going to be a long month for as far as being on the road. We're going to play a lot of games on the road. But, you know, if if, if you got a team that can go out and get focused and uh, do the things that they need to do, it, it can also be beneficial. You know, they sort of get away from everything, and it's all basketball when you get on the road. So, you know, you got to take advantage of that. But it, it'll be tough on them. You know, with all the travel, and then, like you said, we're going to finish up in, in Texas, the Texas road swing, and then we're going to go straight from Texas State to Pensacola to get ready for the tournament. And life in the uh, the uh, Sun Belt so far this season for Little Rock on the road has been very good, 2-0 yeah, yeah. yeah, the they, road. They've we'll done see. a really good job. We'll see what happens this week. I want to ask you one question about Myra Caicedo. In the game on Saturday against UTA and even against Texas State, she'll take the ball to the right side a couple of times and – particularly when a team's playing zone, she'll drive all of a sudden, and she's able to get past them and get easy layups. Is that something she sees, if you can give me that real quickly? Yeah, I mean, she, you know, we, we try to tell all of them against the zone defenses, the best way to break them down is to penetrate. And Coach has really been on her about, you know, penetrate, even though you might not be one of the best shooters, if you can penetrate into the lane and then be able to kick and do some things, you know, you can really call havoc against the zone. We're back after this. Stay with us. Step into the new when you drive a Chevy. It's time for a fresh approach and a new perspective. Meet new friends or reconnect with some old ones and find the Chevy that's right for you. Find new experiences. Find new roads. Step into the new with a new Chevy. Very well qualified buyers can get 0% financing on most Chevy vehicles. Plus, on select models, current competitive owners get an additional $750 bonus cash. See your Arkansas best Chevy dealer. We are back at Embassy Suites. We want to thank our proud partners, AC Delco, Bumper to Bumper, UAMS, Simmons Paint, Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield, Datamax, Arkansas best Chevy dealer, Stevens Inc., PI Roofing, Pepsi, Tipton and Hearst, Baptist Health, Bell Chevrolet, and Diamond Bear Brewing for their sponsorship of Little Rock Athletics. It's the Little Rock Coaches Show. Steve Weedor in for Joe Foley tonight. Real quick, want to uh, send a shout-out to the Landrums. They're normally here, but uh, unfortunately can't make it tonight. But uh, we know they're listening. Uh, they listen to everything that uh, Little Rock does. They go to everything that Little oh, Rock yeah. does. And uh, they're always around, and you always know where they are. Yeah, I hear them, you know, behind our bench there when they're sitting up there. And they, they've supported us for a long time. And, at the conference tournaments, you know, when we go to the conference tournaments, they're always there, and uh, they've been a part of this program and seeing us win those championships for, for many years, and we we really appreciate them. Speaking of the conference tournaments, the uh, Sun Belt Women's Basketball Tournament will be in Pensacola, Florida, at the Pensacola Bay Center starting uh, in 1st of March. Right now, the standings are like this. Appalachian State is number one. They're 5-1. and one. They have an 83 winning percentage, followed by Texas Arlington and Troy. Both of those teams are 7-2. and two. Louisiana is 4-2 and two in fourth place right now, followed by Texas State that is 5-4. and four. Texas State, of course, beat Little Rock in three overtimes. They went to Jonesboro and beat the Red Wolves. And then Little Rock's at 3-3, three and three, so we're in sixth place right now, all alone in sixth place. No ties uh, necessary there. Georgia Southern's three and four. Arkansas State's three and five. Georgia State's two and four, along with South Alabama at two and four. Coastal Carolina's two and five, and ULM is zero oh and seven. Hey, coach, we head to the state of Louisiana. The first uh, one up is the Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns from the Cajun Dome on Thursday night, and it is a about a six-hour bus ride down to uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. Going to get some good. Uh, Cajun food oh, yeah. while we're down there, but it'll be the last time we see the Cajun Dome in the Sun Belt Conference. What do we know about Gary Broadhead's Raging Cajuns? Well, they they they've got a really good post player, Tyriana uh, Doucette. Doucette that you know I think against uh, Louisiana Monroe their last game she had 27 points, and uh, so it, it you know going into it, we know that she's going to be a big factor. They've got uh, three or four guards that are very athletic that can get to the basket and score uh, a lot of points and and can shoot the three I mean they're they're that type of team and and we are going to practice I think Wednesday morning 
and uh, at eight or nine, and then as soon as we get through with practice, we'll drive down to Louisiana and get settled in. And uh, we've, uh, I don't, is it four games in a row? I think that they've beat us the last four games. So uh, four games Coach in Holly, a row. Yeah, we we were talking the other day that you know that I don't know that may be a record for teams in this conference, but we we need to go down there and get our heads on and 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 be ready to play a, a good game of basketball. Well, and these are two teams that we didn't get to play at our place because of the COVID issues that we were having. So right. Lafayette and ULM, we haven't played them yet, and uh, we don't have a chance after this one to play them again unless it is in the conference tournament when it means everything then. But you're right. The fact that uh, there's no other team in the league, I don't think, that has won four games in a row on us in a long time. Exactly. If ever, which there might be back when you had the Middle Tennessees and the Western Kentuckys in here right. uh, when Little Rock started basketball back up on the women's side. But uh, uh, it's something to go down there. And we've had success in the Cajun Dome before. We've won championships down there, regular season championships. We The last overtime game we won – was in the Cajun Dome, I do believe. So right. we and have I, had I success think, down there. Yeah, and I think before they won these four in a row, we probably beat them five or six in a row. Right. I don't remember, but we, you know, that they've they've had our number here the last uh, couple of years, and a lot of it, you know, that uh, Doucette, the post player, gives us a lot of problems. She's, you know, left-handed. She can score. Uh, she can rebound, and you know, uh, we, we've got to come down there and, and have a game plan to, to get her stopped and and be able to uh, execute our offense. And then we head to Monroe, Louisiana, to take on ULM. And uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, there is a place in Monroe, Louisiana called Big Mamas. You need to go there <laughs> to eat. That's all I'm saying. If you look at me, you know I like good food. My wife found that one time when we were traveling from Lafayette to Monroe one day uh, for a game. We had beaten we had beaten Lafayette, and we were coming up to Monroe, and she was on TripAdvisor, and she said, it's number four. We get there, chain link fence around the parking lot. I said, where in the world are you taking me? <laughs> Big Mama's is a place to go. They were without power last year when we were down there, and we, we got in and we ate. It was good. Wow. So. I know you've told me the last couple of years, you know, we've been down there, you're ready to get I, I always there. bring you back that sweet water <laughs> cornbread. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it is a good place to go. But uh, ULM's 0-7. They're still trying to find their way. But last year, uh, they beat us the last time we played them down there. Yeah, it was a struggle. I mean, that that's a tough place to play, too. So, you know, we can't go in and take anything for granted. we got to be ready to play, you know, when we get to Monroe on Saturday. They have lost 10 in a row, that is ULM, 0-7 in Sunbelt Conference play, so no wins there. And I guess the good thing for us is the fact that we're playing on the road this week and we're going to get out of here before this winter storm that is supposedly coming uh, hits. So it looks like we're going to get our games in, uh, which we don't need to miss any more games. And speaking of games missed, it looks like, and we don't know specific dates yet, but it looks like we're going to be able to make some of them up yeah, I, I mean, we're we're looking for some games right now uh, to be able to uh, to play before the conference tournament to try to give our young ladies a couple more games before we go. And uh, looking at you know the weeks we play Arkansas State, we only have one game that week, so uh, that's uh, that's something that I've been working on, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, know something here pretty soon. It won't be Sun Belt Conference games; no, it'll be no. a non-conference type affair. Right, and non-conference. Games, it'll be right. uh, some teams that uh, are basically helping us out to get some right. games in, so that uh, if we go down to the conference tournament and make that run, like Coach Foley Mike's, likes to make, play your best basketball in March, the NCAA say, "Uh, well." You can't go because you haven't played enough games, right? Right, right. right. Now, now they're telling us, you know, we need 25 games, and so we're, you know, we've we've got to find a couple, you know, to be able to get to that point. So that's what we've been working on. You are one of the uh, recruiters on the staff. All of you recruit. But uh, moving to the Ohio Valley, will we start recruiting a different type of player from different parts of the country starting next year when we move to the OVC from the Sun Belt? Well, I mean, I think that's sort of what we got to look at as far as, you know, you're, you're going to be playing in different areas. And, you know, right now we really recruit hard in Dallas and Houston and, you know, those areas. And, and we'll continue to do that. But, uh, you know, as we move north, you know, I think we can go out into St. Louis, maybe even Chicago, you know, some of the Illinois uh, areas there and, and start, 
you know, looking at some players because we'll be playing a lot of games. And that, that means a lot to the recruits if, if you play in an area where, you know, their family and things can come watch them a lot. And uh, so it, it, it'll it give us an opportunity to expand a little bit, I think. We've had some pretty good players out of St. Louis. I think you back bet. of Shannady James a couple of years ago who was a – a big post player for the Little Rock Trojans. Shanika Butler. Shanika Butler, Shanika very good Butler, point guard. Uh, Shannon Haywood. Uh, and you've we, been, we've had we've had a lot of players out of St. Louis, and and that'll be a good area for us right. to go to, you know, in this conference because there's several schools that are close, you know, in the Ohio Valley, uh, and and like I said, Chicago. You know, I've recruited a couple. Of, we've had a couple of girls out of Chicago area that, you know, they they've got a lot of good basketball up there. Well, we are going to be the southernmost school, so we can go up there and say, hey, look, it's not as cold in Little Rock. Now, don't bring them down the middle of this week because they might change their mind. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, you can go up there and you can say, hey, look, it's not as cold. We don't get the blizzards. We don't get the lake effect snow that you get off of Lake Michigan and Chicago down in Little Rock. Right, right. The only problem is you don't have the Cubs down here. (laughs) That's exactly right, but we got the Cardinals, though, right? That's an inside <laughs> joke. I, I'm not saying anything <laughs> about that, Coach. Uh, you uh, have been – this is your second stint on Coach Foley's staff. You left to go coach your daughters in high school basketball and uh, did some good things there and got to some state championships with them and everything. You got to see them through high school. And what? take me back to coming back and being on Coach Foley's staff for a second time. I mean, you helped build this program – and now you're back and helping build it even more. Well, you know, I mean, when we first got here, it was, you know, definitely a build. I mean, we were we were working our tails off. You know, we knew that uh, – or I knew, you know, how good a coach Coach Foley was and, you know, just being around him and uh, had all the confidence in the world that, you know, we could take this Little Rock program to, to special things. And so we, you know, were over in the old field house the, the first year we were here and – uh had you know our first recruiting class and a bunch of great young ladies and then we you know had our second recruiting class and brought them over to the you know the new jack stevens center and it it was just i mean it was one of the best times of my life just watching you know us go from being the 300 and whatever it was 320 rpi team in the country you know all the way to the top 40 you mm-hmm. know by the time i left the first time uh, and, uh, you know, I know most of, you know, you know, Chastity Reed, one of the players that we got, you know, we got her in here and she just, you know, was one of the best players that, you know, I've ever coached. And I think coach Foley would tell you the same that, you know, you get those special players sometimes and they just, you know, they're able to, uh, uh, definitely do some things, you know, for you and the, uh, the university and took us to levels that, you know, we never had been at before. What's it like working with Coach Cash? She was one that was already here, and she stayed. Uh, could have left when uh, Coach Foley came in, but she stayed. And she worked her tail off, and Coach Foley's rewarded her for it. You bet. You know, Coach Cash, she was uh, she was a player here, you know, my first year that we got here. And uh, I think all the girls, you know, and, and Coach Cash was here with uh, the previous staff. Yeah. I mean, she was already here. And so Coach Foley came in, and, and Cash – bought in and I, she was an all-conference player and uh, uh she just you know for for us and our program she means so much i mean uh coach cash is just one of those uh, young ladies that i think all our girls respect and look up to and they know that she's been through it and and she can you know tell them things that hey you know this is what we're trying to do and and it helps them understand things that maybe might be more difficult for them to understand if they didn't have her there and so we uh we really appreciate her and she's such a hard worker and uh i know that uh coach foley thinks of her you know just like a daughter and and me too i mean she's she's been around so long well she's got a good daughter bailey that's growing up i mean she's already taller than my wife she's got some long legs she looks (laughs) like she's going to be a good basketball player i'm sure coach foley wouldn't mind coaching her too Yeah, Bailey. if he can stick around that long, <laughs> he's, he's he's mentioned that a couple of times. He's a boy, he's a, and and Bailey did have she she goes to uh, Pulaski Heights, Pulaski Heights, and she had a game this last weekend. So Bailey's getting started in basketball. Coach Weedor, 
glad you could make it out tonight, sitting in for Coach Foley. But uh, I'll see you on Wednesday at the Jack for practice, and then we'll head down to Lafayette. Looking forward to it, Trey. Thanks All for right. having me. Thanks a bunch. Steve Weedor, assistant basketball coach of Little Rock Trojans, joining us here on the Little Rock Coaches Show. We're back with Sky Walker. Coach Walker's in the building out here at the Embassy Suites. Coach of the Little Rock men coming up after this. Stay with us. Just 40 minutes from Little Rock at the Saracen. It's always fun. Slot machine, lots of money will be won. Come and win or come to eat, mama. Get the best steak you ever had. You want to be at the Saracen? Heck, you've seen it in this hand. Woo! Saracen. Whoa, come to win. Saracen. We are back at the Embassy Suites in West Little Rock. Embassy Suites Little Rock is the is in the business district and minutes from the campus of UA Little Rock. Embassy Suites is the official hotel of your Little Rock Trojans. Embassy Suites Little Rock, a great place to stay. Joined by Coach Daryl Walker. How are you, Coach? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I know you wish you could have a couple of more players back. I don't know if that's going. That's not going to happen. So. Uh... I'm just going to play with the guys I got. I'm not one to make excuses. It is what it is. Uh, Rand said my guys have missed. Uh, it's it's something that he sent me uh, on my phone. I see if I can uh, find it, and uh, it, it was it's shocking to see that. And I'll let you look at it. And you know, I don't keep up with all. Oh that. no, yeah, I saw that. I didn't see I that. I saw that. that. I Eleven like, huh? different players have missed at least one game due to injury this year. Twelve players have started three plus games yeah so it's, that's tough on a coach it's it's hard it's hard to get any any continuity any type of rhythm uh, coach foley and i talked about that last week it's just it's just hard to do when you look at uh what is in front of you guys now i mean the month of january is gone it's gone uh you're 7 11 2 and 4 in sunbelt conference play had a tough road swing uh to coastal carolina and appalachian state you go from the beach to the mountains, and oh, you go man. from the beach uh, where they – they it was cold there even it was because cold of places. what they had going. And then I was talking to Tuck. He said, y'all had three inches of snow while you were already there, and they had 20 inches in 10 days in Boone. Yeah, I was worried about getting getting snowed in because after the game, it was an early game, we always go to Charlotte and spend the night so we can get up and fly back to Little Rock in the morning. And uh, luckily the sun came out. It got a little warmer and melted the snow, and we were able to get out of there. But – you know, it was it was a it was a fun two game road trip. My I, I saw some good things from my team. Uh, we're very short handed, but we had a chance to beat Coastal. We had a chance to beat App State. I mean, we were right there. Five minutes left in the game, we're down three points, and we do some things that we shouldn't have done. And next thing you know, instead of being down three of three or four points, you're down eleven points. So uh, when you when you're short handed, your margin of error is very short. So you almost have to play a perfect game to be honest about it. The game at Coastal, let's start with it. First, Cliff Ellis wasn't there. He had a, about a COVID, so uh, yeah. he wasn't there. Yeah, I talked to Cliff after the game. I said, I said, hell, you didn't need to get COVID. I needed some of your players to get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was a little sick, but he was doing fine. They got a good basketball team. We were right in the basketball game. Uh, when you hold, a, you hold a team to 23 points and, and a half, you would think that you would be up or at least tied. And we were down 23 to 16. I thought we had really played well. Came out in the second half and played pretty well and, uh, and just couldn't close the deal. I thought you started the game well at we, Coastal, but then you hit a lull. There. We hit a lull. We had a seven-minute stretch where we didn't, we didn't score. And we're not good enough to go five, six, seven minutes without scoring. That puts so much pressure on your defense to get stops for seven minutes or six minutes in a row, and that's hard to do. Yeah. And then, obviously, the second half, like you said, just you know, kind of back and forth. You get get within five the margins or six or seven, where, yeah. where yeah. you can – kind of reel it back in, and then all of a sudden something happens and it balloons to even more, and it makes that mountain tough to climb. Well, we had to, we were trying to incorporate uh, Nicola back, yeah. and I knew he was going to be winded. I knew his, his timing was going to be off, and I told my staff, he's not going to be right until after he plays about three or four legitimate games. He's not going to be right, and, and he wasn't. He wasn't right at App State, and he wasn't really right at Coastal. When you look at the game at App State, that uh, game, like you said, you get it right there within three, mm-hmm. and then a three-minute and 33-second scoring drought, one yep. of eight, uh, one of your last eight from the floor. That just you just cannot have that. Uh, you you can do that if you if you have a, a full range of players. You have your team. 
because you probably can go back on the other end and, and suffocate them a little bit on defense sure. so they can't take a, a big run on you. And, you know, we can't do that. That's, that's too much pressure on our defense. We have to score the ball. When we score points, uh, we're a pretty good basketball team. But it's been a struggle. When you take good players out of your lineup, those, those points don't come back. When you're trying to get it done defensively, and like you said, um, the game against Appalachian State, if you try to press, you don't have enough players have to enough even players. do that, do you? No, and, we, and that, that, the press bothered Coastal Carolina, and it bothered App a lot. But I kept saying I got to take my foot off the brake because this is a long, this is a long game, and uh, it's just it's just it's just a chess match back and forth. Now, if I was had a full team, I could have just kept pressing them the whole game. That's what I was going to ask you next, <laughs> Coach. I was going to say, if you had your full gauntlet of players, you would put the pressure on all game long. When I, when I saw that they couldn't handle it, I'd have, I'd have kept pressing the whole game. I, I can't even run, run my 1-3-1 a lot because, you know, that's a lot of running going around. And you, you have to have to do it every once in a while. So making no excuses just is what it is. The Sun Belt Conference this year, Appalachian State right now leading uh, the league 8-2, and two, Arkansas State 5-2. and two. They went into App, and App won both games this weekend over the teams from Arkansas. Yeah, App, App is a good a good basketball team. they got some really veteran guys that's been together for us, and uh, those guys in Delft, those guys are really good basketball players, and, and, and Greg, they've been around a long time, and, and he's, he's done a great job there. I asked Preston last week uh, when you were on the road recruiting, would you like – and I know we don't have to worry about it anymore because we don't have to make that swing. But would you like? Do you like the swing where you start in, in on the beach first and go up to the mountains, or would you rather start at Boone and then go down to Coastal? Probably, probably start in Boone and get it over with. <laughs> get out of there. <laughs> get yeah. on the road and start going back down the yeah. hill towards some warm Instead weather. Instead of going up where your ears start popping. Of going up, man. It's tough, isn't it? And, oh, and yeah. then uh, would you? If you can play app early and then get on the road right after that game and get out of there, we, we kind of did that. Yeah, we, we, it was a four o'clock game. We were able to get out of there. We got to Charlotte about eight forty-five and was able to just sit down and relax and get a beer and just watch some film. When you watch film, what are you looking for? Well, if I if I'm, I, I I I broke down the App State game after the game, just just looking at mistakes that we made, writing stuff down so I can show it to the guys, and which I showed film to the guys today for about fifteen twenty minutes and. We're still a young basketball team. You got two point guards out there that are freshmen right now, so you got to show a lot of different things. When you look at the games coming up this week, Lafayette, uh, six thirty on Thursday at the Jack Stevens Center. ULM on Saturday, two o'clock at the Jack Stevens Center. Lafayette is where this struggle started. Uh, you were guys were down there in <laughs> Louisiana, about to play them. Uh, you had gone through shoot around and everything, and then all of a sudden you got to start testing players, and boom, everybody, you can't play. Everybody kept popping up for a, a positive, and I was, you know, I called George Lee, our athletic director, and said, if one more guy, we're, we're done, and that happened. We were down to five guys. and, and, and we So could, you would have played play. with six? No. no okay, no, once you no, get to seven. No, once you get to seven, you can play after that. Guys just kept kept being a negative, so we had to cancel the basketball game, got on the road, and got back home. What do you see in this Louisiana team that you're going to face on Thursday? They're very big, like we were two years ago. They're they're big. Uh, Akuba's huge. Uh, Jordan Brown's a five-star transfer that uh, Eric Mosman had in Nevada, and then the, uh, new coming the year at Arizona. Now he's at Lafayette. So they're they're really a big basketball team. Duque is it, it comes off the bench at six times. So they're they're a huge team. I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Let's say that uh, the weather forecast, ma- you know, materializes, and there's a lot of issues with travel on Thursday. If Louisiana's here, Little Rock's here, the officials here, do we still play, or do we push it back to Friday? Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you call the commission of the Sun Belt Conference? Let him answer. He that. doesn't like me. Uh, I don't uh, think he uh, likes anybody yeah, from Little Rock. Well, He's already kicked us out of the uh, league. I'm not worried about that. That, that, that would be that would be his call. That would that would be his call. Would you be in favor of playing Friday and then moving the uh, Monroe game to Sunday if that happened? No, uh, I want to play Thursday and Saturday. There and, you go. And stay on schedule. But we'll yeah. see. I, I, my wife was talking about snow. I go, snow? I'm from Chicago. <laughs> I was going to say, snow. you're used go, to snow. I didn't even look at the report. I don't, know, I don't even know what the report is saying. Ice. Oh, it's saying ice? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Did you put on skates and go? We'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm not, I mean, I live on a hill, so I'm not trying to go down the hill if it's ice. But Well, you're from Chicago. Did you ever put on ice skates since you're from no. Chicago and try any of that? You just no. stuck to the hardwood. Just stuck to the hardwood. That's all. No, no playing outside when it got cold. Oh, we always played outside. Yeah, we played football, played tackle football in the snow. Yeah, oh, not that's the ice, fun. but now that, that yeah, not, that's not on ice, in but the in the snow. snow not, yeah, yeah. Was, I don't know what the temperature's going to be. I don't know what they're saying. I haven't even looked. We'll just wait and see. see worst, what worst weather you ever lived through in Chicago. Was it when you were in the in the in, in the league? Chi- I was in Chicago. It probably was nineteen. 19- 68, or, 68 or, or seven seventy, where you couldn't even you couldn't even uh, couldn't, couldn't even open up the front door, 
I mean, the snow was just it was it was it was nuts, man. It was nuts. That's the worst one I've ever seen. I've tried. I'm to never going to forget it either. Well, of course you yeah, don't. It, I mean, like was, people uh, last year will never forget the when, 22 when inches here. When, when you can't get out, the, well, you, they can get out the door. I'm talking when you can't get out the door. We lived in the projects, and it was on one level, street level, and that snow just kept piling up, piling up, piling up, where you couldn't open the door. And if you did, the snow would fall in. I mean, it was a lot of snow. It was crazy. It was, it was okay. crazy. Okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it then. I don't want to live no. in something like that. I've tried to talk to my wife, Coach, because I'm a big Chicago Cub fan. Well, that's about, good in September and June and July. Well, I, I know, and that's what I've tried to do. I've tried to say, hey, let, you know, I think maybe once we – you know, get to retirement age and something. We could move to Chicago, go to games and everything. And she's like, I'm not living in Chicago. Uh, you, you you have to want to live in Chicago. You know, June, July, and August, and September. It's just it's so perfect. It's so nice. Beautiful. Come November, December, January, and February, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good, man. That, that's what I want to find. It's the reason why I didn't move back there. <laughs> I want to find a place where I can stay and I can get to the L and I can get on it and go and not have to be outside that much yeah, in no. December, January. December is going to be cold, and you're going to have to go outside sooner or later. Yeah. And the Hulk is going to be there waiting on you. Yeah. That's she for sure. She, she won't. I don't think she's going to let me no, get, get away from that. that one. No. All right, let's move to uh, Louisiana Monroe, the team that uh, comes into the Jack on Saturday and uh, a team that, again, had a chance against them uh, there at Fant Ewing uh early on in the season. Coach Richard does a great job there, and um, we've always had some very competitive games with them. And like you said, the last time we were down there in Monroe, we had a chance to win the game and, and didn't get it done. So uh, we got two games at home, and I just told my guys we got to take care of two games at home. And we really I'm trying to get my team ready, uh, to be honest about it, for Pensacola because we're so we're so banged up. We're, we're so banged up. I mean, Nicola had to leave practice today because it's – his other hamstrings started bothering him, so we down with it to eight guys practicing. And, and it's just it's hard to get a rhythm. It's hard to get any continuity. Uh, but we're capable of winning basketball games. We've, we've proved it on the road against App State and Coastal that we had some chances. It's just if we had a few more of our starters, we, we, we would have a chance to win some games. How frustrating is that for you, a coach? I, I know you're not making excuses, but to not have all of your bullets. Well, like I tell you, you, you take Note and Williams off of Arkansas team and see how happy Eric Plus will be. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be very happy. Very happy. He's Darrell Walker. Yeah. I'm Trey Schaap. We're back with more from the Embassy Suites in West Little Rock. It's the Little Rock Basketball Coaches Show. Stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Simmons Bank, for your support of Little Rock Trojans Volleyball. Women's track and field and cross country. Women's golf. Women's soccer. Women's basketball. Thank you, Simmons Bank, for your support of Little Rock Trojan women's swimming and diving. Go Trojans. Go Trojans. Go Trojans. Go Trojans. Go Trojans. Go Trojans. Welcome back to West Little Rock and the Embassy Suites. It's the Little Rock Basketball Coaches Show. The a, We want to thank AC Delco, Bumper to Bumper, UAMS, Simmons Bank, Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield, Data Max, Arkansas Best Chevy Dealer, Stevens Inc., PI Roofing, Pepsi, Tipton & Hearst, Baptist Health, Bell Chevrolet, and Diamond Bear Brewing for their support of Little Rock Athletics. We're here with Coach Daryl Walker, head coach of the men's basketball team. And, Coach, we were kind of talking there during that break off of the air that you are having a blast coaching this team, even though that the record is not up to where you would like it to be. No, it's 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 been fun. It's, it's been it's been challenging. It's really made me have to really coach even uh, even harder and prepare even more. As I always prepare, but even more. And we're writing basketball games, and I'm sitting there going, I, I, "This is this is really not my team out here." You <laughs> telling me we we're right here in the basketball game, three you know down three points or five points on the road, so. Uh, if we could ever get healthy, it ain't going to be this year. But if we could knock on wood and be healthy next year, we have a chance to be good. But, you know, I'm excited about the two freshman guards, and I'm going to start starting right now in the backcourt. Uh, they can push the ball. They can shoot it. I think it's time for them to get a lot of minutes because we got so many guys hurt. It's time for those guys to play what a do lot you of minutes. S- what do you see in them that gives you the confidence to put them in this starting role? Well, you know, D.J. Smith, you know, they talk about – everybody talk about the big fellow that's going to Oregon, but he's the one that led that team to a state championship. So – uh, he proved what he can do. I, I probably hurt him a little bit by starting him 
in the beginning of the year. He should have been on the bench just learning, and then I set him down. He became a coach, and the next time I put him in the game, he's been playing well. Uh, Jordan Jefferson had been out with COVID, had been out with a broke, broke hand. He's starting to get confidence, and now you, start, you guys are starting to see he's a really good basketball player. He's quick. He's athletic. He can shoot it. He can put it on the floor. So uh, those guys are going to be here. So they're the future, and they're going to be out there on the court getting a lot of minutes. The other thing we talked about during the break is trying to get your team playing its best basketball when you get to March, and that's going to be Pensacola. I mean, you if you're playing your best ball. we got a chance. You you do have a chance, and we were just looking at the standings too, and you said anybody can beat anybody, anybody in this league. Anybody can beat anybody. I, I, I've looked at everybody's teams from South Alabama to App State to Troy. You kind of watch teams when you, when you scout and you see them play. And I, I tell my staff, I said, we can match up with anybody in this league and anybody can beat anybody in this league. So it's not like it's some team that's really, really better than everybody else. It's just not like that. App State leads the conference right now. They're 8-2. and two. Arkansas State's 5-2. and two. South Alabama 5-3. and three. Troy 5-3. and three. They're right there. Yeah. I mean, they're one game out, South and Troy. And then Texas State's 4-3. and three. Right UT, there. UT Hayes 5-5. Five and five. They're just, uh, you know. Hanging around. They're right there. Three wins away. Uh, Coastal Carolina, Louisiana, both four and five. Georgia Southern, three and five. Georgia State, Little Rock, two and four, and ULM, two and eight. And you, you talk about the importance of being right there. Well, if you can beat Louisiana and ULM this week, that gets you back to 500, and you're right there. I don't talk about that. I, I, I even tell my team that. I've just told myself that if we can win these two games, you know, that's why I thought last week when we played, uh, I don't know if we played at home plate, uh, Texas Alton and Texas State, mm-hmm. and we lost to Texas State 69-59, then we beat, you beat Arlington. If we could have won those two right there, you know, that's, that's an extra two wins. We'd have been three and one. If we can take care of home, which is going to be a tough because Lafayette is really, really, really big. We're going to have to rebound the basketball, and then we got Monroe. So we're just going to take one game at a time. This we're is, capable of winning two games. Yeah, this is just to be funny. Maybe you could tell Coach Foley what it takes in three overtimes to win because <laughs> we couldn't get it done in three. And ironically – the Jack Stevenson or saw back to back games that. that went three overtimes. You guys got it done against Arlington with only five available thanks, players. Thanks, thanks to Terrell Curtis. Thanks to yes. TJ. <laughs> uh, that, that was a really a big three out the corner and a heck of a layup. That just energized the crowd. It energized us, and we were able to win that basketball game. So hopefully we can uh, we can get it done this Thursday and Saturday. You saw it there with him. I saw it in in Mobile with uh, South Alabama. When you have a, a, a guy that uh, just gives everything they possibly can in practice and everything to actually get in the game and score. I saw it with Haley Honaker, the walk-on yeah. uh, that Joe Foley has. When she got her shot blocked, Coach, I know you didn't get to see it, but then she was able to get the ball, score a layup, goes down the other end, she takes a charge. That just energizes the bench, and when you see Haley got like, in the game, yeah, she's, she's from Minnesota. Yeah, scored two points. Yeah, Trent, Trent Tucker uh, sent me her film last right. summer about coming down here, walking on, and Foley Foley loves her. Uh, TJ gets coached hard, just like scholarship players, and so he he knows uh, she what, does too. He, he knows what we're doing offensively and defensively. I mean, when he took that shot, I was like, what the. Great shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he shot it with confidence, and he was wide open, and he, and he, and he took the shot. Yeah, and, and as a coach, you like to see that. You I like to I, have your players I was, have confidence. I was, so, I was so happy for, uh, uh, for TJ. I said, yeah, TJ, I'm going to coach you hard. Just like I coach everybody else. I'm getting on your butt like everybody else. I said, because this was three years ago. I said, because one of these days, you're going to have to play in a real game, and it's going to happen. There ain't going to be no garbage time. It's going to be you better be ready, and he was. That's right. Coach Foley said last week that he walked into the locker room after the game against South Alabama. Everybody was going nuts because they had won big and everything. They were all around Haley. She had a good game, and he walked her. He said, hey, 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 just say, he goes, Haley, come here. Let me see your forehead. I just want to make sure it didn't have Wilson imprinted on it because her first shot, I mean, it, it got, got rejected got big time. Yeah, I mean, I think well, it sounded – sound like, Big coach, it sounded like a bomb went off in the arena. I mean, you could hear it. I mean, you've heard the the hand slap the ball. I, I didn't know Haley got in the game. I'm happy for her. I got to talk to her when I see her. I got in the that. game, two points, and drew a charge. Okay, okay. I mean, that that's – No, she, she – Foley says she's a delight kid to coach. She works hard. She's the type of walk-on you want, and so is TJ. Yeah, and they do things extra. They do everything, man. They're and good, they they're do good it right. Team, and they're good teammates. And they're usually the first ones there at practice they're, and the last ones the, to they're, leave. They're the good teammates. I was so happy for TJ. He's been with me for four years. I was so happy with him. All right, what's it going to take this week? Man, who, who knows who's going to be playing? That's the first thing. Well, <laughs> hopefully hopefully Nicole is going to be playing. Yeah. Uh, if he's not playing, I don't know what it's going to take. It's going to take a, another crazy effort to, to get it done. Lafayette's a 
I know they were picked to win it, but that's why I know people don't know what they're talking about when they try to pick stuff in the preseason. They're you four just, and five. Yeah, you just never know. But they're they're a really good basketball team. They're big. They got guards. They got they got some really good players. So we're gonna have to make shots. The rebounding gap can be fifteen or twenty. We're gonna have to be either the ten or eight. They out rebound or something like that. And we're gonna have to make some shots. We have been defending. We have stretches where we can't five six minutes where we don't score. Mm-hmm. Coastal Carolina, we missed thirteen shots in a row. I keep telling you, whole team with 23 points, you think you're gonna, the game's going to be tied or you're going to be ahead. When and that, it wasn't. When that happens, when you're not able to hit your shot from the outside, would you like to see your guys drive it to the hole, maybe draw some fouls? Yeah, that would be, free be great line? to put it, put it on the floor and, and try to get to the rim and try to get to the free throw line. But we just we couldn't do anything. When you look at the Ohio Valley for next year, how does your recruiting change going into that league as opposed to the Sun Belt Conference? It's not going to change at all. I'm going to always try to uh, recruit players above that level and that's one reason why i i, I won in my second year because i had a few players that was kind of a little bit above that level and that we, coach baker's in florida right now recruiting we've been recruiting uh very hard and trying to get some really good basketball players in for next year to add on to what we got that's hurt coach good luck this week thank you so much hope we can get the games we'll in. see that's daryl walker head basketball coach of your little rock trojans i am trey shap the men will take on ull Thursday night, 6.30 at the Jack, and then Saturday at ULM, 2 o'clock. We'll be right back here next Monday night. Enjoy the rest of your week, everybody, and go Trojans.